Clowns are the creepiest children's entertainers on Earth. So naturally, they've been used to terrify and delight grown-up film fans for decades. From homicidal aliens to juggalo cowboys, here are our picks for the four best and four worst clown movies of all time. If you haven't seen Terrifier, congratulations on your ability to sleep a full eight hours without waking up in a cold sweat. An indie film that sat on the shelf for a few years before being released, Terrifier is one of those rare horror movies that doesn't seem to feel the need to overexplain its villain. The audience knows that he's a clown, and he's probably demonic. But that's about it. He's silent, grinning, and more than delighted to go on a trip to Slaughter Town anytime he can. Terrifier is a low-budget horror movie spinning off an even lower-budget short film, and it's got love letter to the good old days of horror, dripping off of it like viscera off a clown monster's chainsaw. It has gory practical effects, it has party girls getting mutilated, and if you're down with slasher throwback sickness, it's 100% worth looking up. Yes, 1990s TV version of It is charming in its own way. It's a slice of horror filmmaking from a simpler time, but it's just a bit agonizing to watch without the rose-colored glasses of nostalgia. Don't get us wrong, Tim Curry's performance as Pennywise is fantastic. It's a movie around him, hampered by a made-for-TV budget and content restrictions that hasn't aged well. There's a barely animated giant spider at the conclusion. There's a rough acting and a dramatic screaming about Pennywise being too mean. There's the filmmaker's steadfast faith in the usually outstanding Harry Anderson's comedic stylings being able to carry the day, only to watch him uncharacteristically drop the ball. Come on, Tosha, get a grip. Just shy of three decades later, it holds a place in pop culture history as quite possibly being the reason that every other millennial seems to be afraid of clowns. Watched with fresh eyes, though, not very scary at all. The words so bad it's good have been thrown around so much that they've pretty much lost all meaning at this point. Cultural interpretations of what's camp and what's just vanilla-flavored lameness ebb and flow over time. Somewhere floating atop the ties of our willingness to accept silliness, there is the unsinkable ship that is Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Killer Clowns is a tough movie to sell on paper. No two ways about it, it's the story of a species of alien invaders who look, act, and accessorize like clowns. Their ships are like a circus tent, and they kill with an array of weapons, including pies. If that sounds like a good time to you, you're in luck. There are rumblings of an upcoming sequel from the original creators. John Wayne Gacy's list of real-life atrocities is so long that we'll likely never know the exact number of deaths for which he was responsible. When the details of Gacy's crimes are laid out, most people are inclined to instinctively recoil in horror and disgust. But a small sliver of the world's population veers left and says, now that's a picture. I'm a very important man. Released in 2003 under the names Gacy and the Cruel Space, this true crime depiction of the life of John Wayne Gacy juxtaposes a sadism against his gigs working as a clown for local events. Exploitative, sensationalist, and featuring Adam Baldwin from Firefly, it also stars the guy who played Pee Wee's bully in Pee Wee's Big Adventure in the title role. So it might just ruin your childhood. When it was first announced that Stephen King's It was being readapted for the big screen, fans of the 1990 TV movie might have been skeptical, but that lasted exactly as long as it took for them to see Bill Skarsgård in character. Yikes. Look, the new It movies aren't perfect. The CGI can be less than impressive, and there are unsatisfying moments. But as adaptations of million-page books about trans-dimensional ageless horrors go, they're a hoot. They manage to pull believable performances out of the child stars, which is sort of the filmmaking equivalent of landing on Mars. And Bill Hader is a revelation, which came as no surprise to fans of his masterful work on HBO's Barry. Maybe this is all I'm good at. 1989's Clown House is a slasher in the same vein as every other low-budget entry in the genre from that era. It follows a story of three brothers being stalked by a trio of escaped mental patients dressed as clowns and lusting for blood. There are misunderstandings and mix-ups, as tends to happen in these situations. At one point, a young Sam Rockwell in his film debut gets stabbed into unconsciousness. The movie ends with a title card reading, quote, No man can hide from his fears, as they are a part of him. They will always know where he is hiding. And you know what? That would have been an okay ending to an unremarkable and largely dull movie if it wasn't for the real-world horror happening behind the scenes on the set of the film. Director Victor Salva abused one of Clown House's child stars, and was convicted and sentenced to three years in prison, ultimately serving less than half of his sentence before popping back onto the scene to direct Powder in 1995. His career has continued with movies like the Jeepers Creepers franchise and a constant low-grade public curiosity as to how this guy still has a career. 
Cold filmmaker Bobcat Goldthwait is a national treasure. Once a comedian known for his aggressively annoying persona, he's become a director whose movies tend to be tragic, complicated, peculiar, excessive, and agonizing. Before World's Greatest Dad and God Bless America, he wrote and directed a movie called Shakes the Clown, and it's been dividing critics and audiences ever since. The elevator pitch version is that it's the story of an alcoholic birthday clown who's framed for murder and has to outfox the borderline Mad Max-level gangs of performers who rule the entertainment circuit. The more complicated version is that it's Goldthwaite's representation of the comedy cliques that exist at every open mic community in America. Some critics called it amazing, some called it terrible. Perhaps the highest praise came, believe it or not, from Martin Scorsese, who called it the Citizen Kane of alcoholic clown movies. Okay. Salute. Over the years, it has become almost a rite of passage for a successful band to dip their toes into the world of Hollywood. The Beatles had classics like Help and Yellow Submarine. The Spice Girls irrevocably changed the geography and political structure of the Earth when they terraformed the planet into a newer, better spice world. And in 2010, a posse of chemically imbalanced clowns proved once and for all that just because you can't figure out magnets doesn't mean you can't run a camera. Big Money Rustlers is a long-awaited follow-up to 2001's Big Money Hustlers, the first insane clown posse movie. It's set in the wild American West of 1837 for some reason. Visually, it appears to have been shot on a budget of whatever loose change was wedged into the cushions of their insane clown couches. The script seems to have been less written and more found somewhere. Big Money Rustlers was pretty obviously a movie made for the fans. It's goofy and weird, but if you don't care at all about ICP, the whole thing is just borderline unwatchable. The name's Wolf, Sugar Wolf, as in. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Looper videos by your favorite cinematic clowns are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.